I want to speak to you this morning about another reason why we can be in love with God. You know, last week we spoke of one of the greatest challenges of our time is to not allow our love to grow old, uh, cold. Well, you could say old too, I guess, but not allow our love to grow cold. The Bible says that in the last days, because of iniquity, because of the spread of wickedness, and because the world is saying, well, everybody's doing it now. <laughs> everybody's doing it, so I might as well go along. And that because of that lawlessness, the Bible says that most people's hearts will grow cold. The love in the people's hearts will grow cold. And that's something we have to watch, even as Christians, to guard our heart, the Bible says, with all diligence. What is the condition of your heart this morning? I want to ask you a question, church. How is your heart today? How is your heart today? The Bible says guard your heart with all diligence because from your heart come all the issues of life. Your heart is like a rudder. It's like a navigational system. Somebody say amen. It, it, it's a compass. It guides you and, and, and directs your life wherever it's... To. If your heart is sick, your whole life's going to be... If your heart is cold, it's going to affect the way you are. If your heart has doubts or has no more faith... It's going to show up. Guard your heart. And this is a good thing this morning because I believe God wants us to become more in love with him than ever before. And the way to allow your love or to make sure your love doesn't get cold is to keep on downloading God's love for you first. The Bible says very clearly, this is just a quick review from last week. It says that we are able to love because God first loved us. It defines love by God's terms. 1 Corinthians 13 describes God's definition of love. Love is not just saying, well, God, I'll tip my hat to you. I'll go to church on Sunday. Love is, first of all, accepting the sacrifice of Christ on the cross and saying it was the love of God that allowed Jesus to take those nails into his hands. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We love because he first loved us. Are you with me this morning? The first and most important thing you could do in your life is accept and respect and commune with the fact that God really loves you and he wants you in his family. If I didn't feel that so strongly, how would I be able to love others? If I didn't feel like my life was important to God, why would I think that Brother Joseph here... His life was important. If God didn't care about me, then why would I care about somebody else? So we got to keep coming back to this wonderful, amazing truth that God really, really loves us. Hallelujah. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was once blind, but now I see. I was once lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. This happens in your devotional life. Every day you have the opportunity to get with God and dwell on the idea, God really chose me. God really loves me. Start off, imagine if we start off every day with the idea that God treasured my life, valued my life so much that he was willing to send his only son to die in my place. We are ransomed not with material things such as silver or gold, the Bible says, but with the precious Everybody say, precious blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Is that worth more than diamonds? Is that worth more than gold? Is there anything in this whole universe that's more precious than the blood of Christ? Imagine, friend, if you started off your day like that. I'm going to go out into this world. I'm going to face my family. I'm going to face the, my job, whatever it is you're doing with the idea that I'm a person who was rescued by God. I once was lost, but now I'm fine, found. I was blind, but now I see. Wouldn't that change your attitude towards others? Wouldn't that give you some fuel to go forward and say, you know what, I can try loving that, that difficult person again. Have you ever run out of love? I'm raising my hand. None, nobody here has, but I have. God allows refillings. God allows downloads. Somebody say amen. amen. Romans 5.5 5 says the love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. 
That's why your communion and your devotional life with God is so important. Because when you commune with God, when you read his word, when you pray, and you understand the closeness of God and the fact that he has not rejected you, the fact that he's forgiving your sins, that you actually have the privilege of being close to a holy, almighty, omnipotent God who created the universe. If that doesn't fill you with wonder, then check your pulse. Come on now, somebody say amen. That God Almighty would love me? That God wants to have fellowship with me? That God created me because he wanted me? I was no mistake? Come on now. You know, there are mistaken people, but any, any baby that's born into this world is not a mistake. Every baby is a gift from God. Come on, church. Amen. You can give a, a praise to that. Every baby, every child. There's some children that weren't wanted, but God wants you. Hallelujah. God has a plan for your life. And the love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And today, as we look at this ministry of Christ as our eternal high priest, the title of this message is Jesus, our faithful and merciful high priest. I believe as we study this this morning, you're going to find more reasons to be in awe of God. You're going to find some more reasons to refuel your love and not give up on this world. If Jesus could not only die for our sins, but also live to intercede for us as our great high priest, how important am I to God? How blessed am I? Somebody say, how blessed am I? That not only did he die for my sins, but the Bible says he ever lives to make intercession for us. Before the throne of God. He's pleading for us today. And this week I got this, this wonderful impression. And it just became so real to me. And that Jesus is actually pleading for me. He cares about me. When the devil is trying to take me out. Jesus is standing in the gap. Hallelujah. He said to Peter. He said Peter the devil has wanted to sift you. How many of you can say the devil tried to take me out a few times. Come on now. But God. But Jesus was praying. He said to Peter, the devil wanted to have you, Peter. But I've been staying up at night praying for you. Hallelujah. That your faith will not fail. Jesus, the Son of God who lives forever, who conquered death, who conquered Satan, who conquered sin, is now living at the right hand of God, interceding for the saints, pleading for you before the Father's throne. Saying that, Sister Adelaide, or whoever you are today, don't give up. Hallelujah. Don't be discouraged. God's got you. God's praying for you. He cares about you. Our scripture for today is Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Now, let's just look at 14 for now. Or it could be 16. I'm not sure. Let's see. It's 14. Okay. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we pro profess. This is an encouragement to the church and to the saints to understand that because God made provision not just for our sins, but also to know that life is going to be hard because we're human beings. And he allowed his son to also be robed in human flesh. Jesus Christ was 100% God, but 100% man. 100% human. And the Bible says, and I'll read this to you in just a moment, that he was touched with all the feelings of our infirmities. He knew what it was like to be tempted. He knew what it was like to be tired. He knew what it was like to be hungry. He knew what it was like to be betrayed. To try to do good and have people be spiteful to you. Can you imagine that? The Bible says that for a good man, somebody, so often somebody might die for a good person. But God shows his love to us because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us while we were sinners. He died for his enemies. On the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Are you with me this morning? I want you to understand how blessed we are to have a high priest in heaven. The writer of the book of Hebrews 
focuses on both sides. If you read the book of Hebrews, it's an amazing, amazing account of this high priestly ministry of Christ. He focuses on both sides of Christ's work. The finished work on the cross. When he said, I am finished, our sins were paid for. But it also, the book of Hebrew also focuses on his unfinished work. Say, his unfinished work. The unfinished work of Christ is to stand with us all through life as our intercessor. To cheer us on. Hallelujah. To stand in the gap for us. To fight for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that we don't fail. He said to Peter, I pray that you will not fail. Since we have a great high priest who has ascended into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to, the, to our faith. Because look who's fighting for you. Look up to heaven this morning. Get a picture in your mind of who it is that's standing in heaven uh, pleading before God. Who is it that's fighting for you? Who's on your side? Turn to your neighbor and say, Jesus is fighting for me. Jesus is on my side. We see this prophetically spoken of in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 53, 11 and 12. After he suffered, speaking of Christ, this was 700 years before the crucifixion. 700 years, Isaiah the prophet saw Christ. He said, after he has suffered, he will see the light of life. In other words, he will be resurrected. And he'll be satisfied that by his knowledge... My righteous servant will justify. In other words, through his sacrifice, through his death, many, including us, will be justified by faith. Amen? Because he will bear their iniquities, our sins. Therefore, God says, I will give him a portion among the great. He will have a name that is above every name. And I will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life unto death. And was numbered with the transgressors. So there it speaks very clearly of his vicarious death. That he died in our place. And then the last sentence. I love this. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Because you see, even after our salvation. How many of you were saved when you were a teenager? How many of you were saved in your 30s? 20s, 50s, whatever it is. Well... Guess what? As long as you're on this earth, you're still going to deal with this body of flesh. You're going to still deal with temptations. You're going to still get tired. You're going to still get weary. You're going to still fight discouragement. But I'm happy to declare to you today that Christ is our intercessor. And he's praying that our faith will not fail. Hallelujah. Not only did he die for our sins. But it says he made intercession, and he's still making intercession. God, in his amazing love, gave us a Savior who, even though he was God, was also 100% human. A unique Savior. The Word became flesh. The Word was with God from the beginning, eternally. Christ, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were always together for eternity. But that special Christmas day... When Christ was born, the Word became fresh, flesh. God took on the form of a man. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4.15. Hebrews 4. I hope you write these scriptures down. There's some powerful truth coming out of here today. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And I like the way it speaks of it in the Amplified. If you have an Amplified Bible, this is way, this is kind of like a paraphrase. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weakness and temptation, but one who has been tempted knowing exactly how it feels to be human. In every respect as we are, yet without committing any sin. He was tempted in every way we could be tempted, and yet he didn't give in to sin. Now you say, well, that was easy for him because he was God. No. Jesus did not overcome Satan and sin and temptation in his divine powers. He overcame Satan and sin and everything else in this world through being filled with the Holy Spirit as a human being. Oh, this is, this is an important point right here. This is a very... This is good theology right here. He overcame Satan not 
with his divine prerogatives. He said in the Garden of Gethsemane, don't you know that I could call my father right now and call 10,000 angels? I could snap my fingers right now and get rid of Satan. No problem whatsoever. But shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me to drink? Shall I not obey the Father's will? When he was in the desert, Jesus rebuked the enemy three times. I said, the word of God says, the word says, the word says, it is written, it is written. He overcame. He overcame Satan. He overcame every temptation. He was in the garden praying, sweating like blood coming down from his face. Come on, somebody. Agonizing in prayer. Yielding to the Holy Spirit. Because why? He wanted us to see that if he overcame, we could also overcome. If he defeated Satan, we have also defeated Satan. Hallelujah. If he didn't give up, we are, and none of us in this room, come on church, have ever, ever had to carry a cross to Calvary. We don't even have an idea. We have no idea the, the temptation. He said, did Jesus face temptation like that? Ten times worse. Because God does not allow the enemy to take us out. But Jesus, Jesus experienced the full fury of Satan on the cross. In other words, it was God saying, okay, here's my son. Give it your best shot. He'll take everything. He'll take all the judgment. He'll take all the sin. He'll take all the shame, all the murder, all the lust, all the pride on the body of his holy son. And he offered his blood and said, it is finished. And then because he was pure, because he had no sin, and he didn't deserve to be crucified. Are you with me, church? God could not leave him in the grave. Hallelujah. The grave could not hold him. God raised him up. Death had no power over him. And because he overcame, we can overcome as well. The word sympathize is a beautiful word in the Greek, sympatheo. It means, and I'm talking about our high priest, sympathizes. It's not like you just feel sorry. Oh, the poor guy, you know, he's got bad luck, too bad. <laughs> God doesn't sympathize. You know, you think you have sympathy because you see somebody and you say, ah, oh, what a break, too bad. Sorry about that, buddy. No, 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 no. This word sympathy means to have compassion. <clears throat> it actually literally means, sympatheo means in Greek, to suffer along with somebody else. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. I hope this is touching somebody's heart today. The chastisement that I deserve, the punishment I deserve, he took the whipping that I deserved. And by his wounds, by his blood, and by his divine virtue, I am made whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am cleansed. I am made whole. The interesting thing about this word sympatheo is that it threw the gods of the Greeks and the Roman in the culture that Jesus came into in his world, the first century, the Greek and the Romans had many gods. But this is so interesting that the main attribute of the Greek and Roman gods was not sympathy, it was apatheo, from which we get the word apathy. Here's what their reasoning was. They said if, if our gods, whether it was Zeus or Mars or whatever else they worshipped, in order to be God, must not feel anything that is human because that's going to make him affected by human beings and he won't be God anymore. You, you see what they were thinking? They were saying, Mars, Zeus, they have no concern whatsoever for people. They have apathy. They can't feel anything that we feel because they're gods. But Jesus was not like that. Hallelujah. Jesus was not like that. He was sympathetic, not apathetic. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, he was sympathetic, not apathetic. This is wonderful news for us. 
for every human being. You sitting here this morning. I feel like God is reading your mail today. Who struggles with weakness. That marital situation with fears, anxieties, temptation, weariness. Too many burdens. Even Jesus fell under the weight of the cross. Jesus had to have somebody help him carry his cross. Don't tell me he wasn't human. He was 100% human. But he not only paid the price for our sins, but now he ever lives to make intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Would you please look at Romans 8, 34. I hope you're writing these down. Romans 8, 34. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died in our place and was raised to life for us. And he is now sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading or interceding for us. Hebrews 7, 25. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost or forever those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. In other words, what, what, you try, what I'm trying to get across today, and I believe what God's trying to say to you, I hope you just remember this key thought, this central thought. If God had the power and the love, love enough to save you and to let Jesus die in your place, he didn't just drop you there. Somebody say, he didn't just drop me there at the cross. He also had enough foresight to know that we we're going to need some, some more help all the way until we get to be 70, 80, 90, or whenever God calls us home. And so he ever lives. He not only saved us, but now he's our daddy. Hallelujah. He not only saved us, but now he's my elder brother. Hallelujah. And he'll walk with me. He'll talk with me. He walks with us in our struggles. He feels our pains. Today he wants you to know he sympathizes. He empathizes. He walks in our suffering and he is praying for us, pleading on our behalf before the Father. I don't know what you're facing. I've had a pretty hard week. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I've been waiting for some results, some medical results. It's been very difficult. And I have to say, the Lord's taught me something through this experience. For one thing, he's made me understand some of the suffering of Jesus. To know that he was facing the cross. And yet, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. It also makes me understand how people, some of you blessed brothers and sisters, our beloved friends, what you go through, what you feel, when you're suffering. You see, when you're suffering, you have a heart for other people that are suffering. Are you with me? It's not just sympathy, it's empathy. Been there, know what that's like. And in a sense, I can't explain this, but in a sense, I feel closer to God in many ways than I've ever been before. Hebrews 2, 17 and 18. Please remember these scriptures. scriptures. For this reason... Christ had to be made like them, like us, fully human in every way in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he might make atonement for the sins of people. Because he himself suffered, are you with me? Because he himself suffered when he is tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. I don't think I've ever preached a message as focused as this one on the high priestly ministry of Jesus Christ. I've taught about it different times, just in a classroom setting maybe. But this is a word for the church today. This is a message. As a matter of fact, I, I don't mind telling you that I had another message in mind up, right up till Saturday morning. And as we're sitting at the table, my wife and I, just before we opened our devotional book, the Lord dropped this message in my heart. Preach on the high priest ministry of Christ, that he's our intercessor. And then, when, this is God's honest truth. And then when we opened our devotional book for the day, the scripture for the day was on Christ, our high priest. 
our intercessor. That actually happened. So I know this is a message for you. I know this is a message for today. What does this mean for us in the world we live in? We are so privileged. We are so blessed. See, God didn't just say, you know, it's a good thing I just let you get away with it. You know, I saved you, and you're lucky to be in my family. Now stay over there in the corner and don't bother me. He doesn't say that. Sometimes people act like that. But how many of you know God doesn't like that? It doesn't act that way. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He will assist you through life. This is what it means. As a follower of Jesus, you always have design, uh, divine assistance available to you through Christ. 24 hours a day. Number two, the name of Jesus is the authorization by which we have access to God the Father. He said, go in my name. Ask anything in my name. It would be like somebody saying, uh, listen, I own this store down here. Just tell them. You bump into the boss. He said, I want to give you something. I want to give you a gift. I own that store over there, that uh, Walmart or whatever it is, the 7-Eleven. I want you to go in there and tell them, give that man something. He said, and you go and you mention that person's name. You say, wow, you know the owner? Yeah. Yeah, we know the creator and the owner. Amen? We're authorized in his name. To have access. And finally, believers have a representative in heaven. We have a representative who speaks up for us. An advocate. A savior. Jesus Christ, our high priest. He makes intercession for us in our weaknesses and our brokenness. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. I want to leave you with four points, and this is, uh, I wish I had taken the time to maybe give out little uh, cards or bulletins or something you could write on, but you can listen to the message again on the the website. Our messages are on our website at uh, catalystorlando.org. And Facebook. And Facebook, that's right. I wanted to leave you with four uh, blessings. Three, excuse me, three blessings. No, four, four blessings. <laughs> can't count my own notes here. <laughs> that result from the ministry of Jesus Christ, our high priest. And, and before I say these things, I want to just remind you, how many of you are starting to get a picture in your mind as Christ as a high priest? After hearing this message, are you starting to see a visual of Christ being in heaven, not a stoically just sitting there? You know, tapping his fingers, <laughs> waiting for the end of the world. The Bible says he's pleading. Ple- Have you ever pleaded for something? That involves emotion. That involves feeling, doesn't it? He's pleading for us. And this is found, it's not just for one time, it's throughout eternity. Therefore, Hebrews 7.25, therefore he is also able to save forever those who come to God through him since he is always making intercession for us. So for all time, not just for our sins, but for the rest of our lives, he is making intercession for us. That's number one. Number two, he breaks the power of fear in our life. How many of you know that's a good thing? Amen. Amen. Perfect love casts out fear. Amen. This is found in Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. I think we have it on the screen. Watch this. Because God's children are human beings, they're made of flesh and blood, the Son, that is Jesus, also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Wow. Because he's our high priest, because he overcame death, he has broken the fear of death in our life. Hallelujah. Death is no longer a strange, mysterious tunnel. Somebody say amen. Death is the Father's house. It's the Father's house. Amen. When we, after we pass through this life, we go to the Father's house. That's what I'm trying to say. He breaks the power of fear. Number three, 
He helps us with all of our temptations. Aren't you glad for that? When you're tempted, you could go to him. Lord, I can't take this person anymore. Lord, I'm fed up with life. Lord, I'm lonely. Lord, I'm bored. Lord, nobody cares about me. Lord, whatever it is you're facing. He was tempted, and he can bring comfort to you today. This is found in Hebrews 4, verse 15. We read it before. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses and temptations. What are you being tempted to do today? That is not of God. But one who has been tempted, knowing exactly how it feels to be human, in every respect as we are, yet he did not give in to sin. So if he overcame, we can also overcome. And finally, this is the last one. Let's stand together. As a matter of fact, let's stand together. Number four, we have access in his name to the throne of grace. 24-7. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Seeing, seeing then that we have so great a high priest who has passed through the heavens, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot be sympathetic, sympathetic with our weaknesses, but one who is in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Now look, look at this, the last sentence. Let us therefore, say it with me, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace for what? That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. Aren't you glad? That Amen? A throne of grace. Would you bow your head with me for a moment? Hallelujah. All my anxiety, all my cares, I bring to the mercy seat. And I leave them there. Father, I ask you by your Holy Spirit to drive this message home to our hearts. Lord, I've attempted to, to bring forth your word, Lord, with it in my own limited human way, Lord. But I know, Lord, that you said no word from God is without effect. The word of God will not return void. Amen. If you meditate on these scriptures today, I guarantee you that you will break into a new dimension in your life. You begin to see Jesus as much closer to, the, to you than you realized. When you realize that this is his ongoing ministry, his priestly function, interceding for us, you'll never again see Jesus as some distant or indifferent person. Our God is not apathetic. He's sympathetic. Can you say amen this morning? Would you please give God a praise in the house? I challenge you, friends. I plead with you. I plead with you. This message is a keynote message. And I do believe this can be a turning point in your life. If you take this to heart, and review these scriptures again. You'll find a lot more reasons not to let your love grow cold. Hallelujah. The world will have no sway over you. Because you'll be able to say, I cross is before me, the world is behind me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Father. Would you take a moment right now and just thank Jesus for being your high priest? Maybe it's something you've never done before. Would you please do that with me right now? Lift your hand and say, Jesus, thank you for being my eternal high priest. Not only loving me enough to die for me, but now living to plead before the Father on my behalf. To help me when I'm weak, to pick me up when I'm down. To care for me, Lord. Hallelujah. To pray for me that my faith will not fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To push back the enemy. Hallelujah. To put up a blood, a nail scarred hand in the face of the devil and say, no, no, this one is mine. Hallelujah.
Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm getting it. I'm getting blessed by this message today. I see Jesus, and the accuser of the brethren, comes like he did before Job uh, to, to accuse Job. And I see Jesus putting up a nail scarred hand and saying, Satan, no, you see this scar right here? You can't touch him. You can't do this one belongs to me. Hallelujah. This one is mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are we singing, Joe? Jesus. Jesus. Lord to me. Master. Master Savior. Master Savior. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. You're the ruler. Ruler of You're my the heart. Ruler of my heart today. Jesus, Lord. Jesus, Lord, to me. Let's sing it together a little, a little bit slower, Brother Joe. Jesus, Jesus, Lord. My heart, ruler of my heart today, Jesus, Jesus, Lord, to me. You know, we ended a little early today. Uh, I just feel, Pastor Angel, join me. I just feel. Led. I don't. I haven't been giving altar calls every week because I don't want to just become ritualistic about an altar call. Are you with me, church? But I just feel today that there's somebody who may need to come up and say, I want my life to belong to God in a deeper way. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life, not just my Savior but also my Lord. As we sing that again slowly, I want you to come up. And you could keep your distance socially. We're just going to take five minutes around the altar. And I hope all of you come to consecrate ourselves and to seek after God's face. Sing Jesus, it with me. Jesus, Jesus, Lord to me. Master, say, Hallelujah. Is he the ruler of your heart? Ruler of my heart today. Jesus, Lord, to me. Hallelujah. 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 Lord. For saving my soul. Come on, church. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me the salvation so full everybody just lift your hand look up towards God this morning we're not here today for Pastor Dave or Pastor Angela you're here to meet with God amen somebody say amen I, I'm here to meet with God I'm here because I need something from him I need to get closer I need to know him better. I need to know him as my high priest. Hallelujah. I need to be more grateful. Hallelujah. I need to be more grateful Hallelujah. to him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. You know, I wanted to share something with you. 
Pastor was being honest. We've had a very tough week in many, many ways. Many ways. I don't pastor himself, but other things. And I think you can relate to that. And the more I was trying to pray, the more prayer requests I was getting. And I kept getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And I kept trying to carry this on my own and pray. And then all of a sudden, this realization this morning as we were sitting at the table, a great high priest is there to make intercession. I don't know if you realize the impact of that. You know, you may feel like the only enabler in your household. You may feel like the only one that can pray. You may feel like the only one. But no, there is a great high priest. I can't tell you. I still get chills right now what it did for me this morning. I said, Lord, you know what my cousins are suffering. You know what my daughter is going through. You know my husband. You know what the people in the church are going through, Lord. You know the needs, oh, Lord. You know, Lord. And so I'm standing because you are making intercession for them. It's not just me. It's not just you. You have a great high priest that will make intercession for you. And I don't know if you felt like I did, but all of a sudden I just felt like a million tons came off of me. And I said, Lord, you know these people. You know what they need, Lord. It's not just my prayers. You are interceding. You're interceding before my Father and making intercession for everyone on your heart today. I want to just ask you, I want to agree with, in prayer with Pastor David for you. If you are carrying so many burdens for so many people, be honest. Just raise your hand and we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you. This is not just for you. It's carrying burdens for many people today. And things that only God can do. Hallelujah. I know that's the right audience. And out there, we're, we're praying for you. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that the realization I had this morning, Lord, when I couldn't even lift my head, when the words to pray were failing me, Lord, and my body was weak and I was tired, I couldn't even think of all the names that there were so many. I had this realization that I have a great high priest in heaven who is praying, who is interceding before the Father for everything on my heart today. So I pray that all those that are weary and heavy laden will come unto you and rest, God, that we will find rest for our souls in you and know that you are interceding, Lord, that you are carrying the heavier end of this yoke. You are carrying these burdens, Lord that we can cast all our cares on you. So right now, I cast all my cares on you for all my loved ones, for my husband, Lord, for the ones in the church going through trials, for ones that are watching today, Lord. We cast our care on you, Lord, because you care for us, but you are interceding. Your work is not finished in intercession, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That you are making intercession for me today. You are making intercession for my brothers and sisters. And Lord, it says you are touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Lord, you touched with what we're going through. You're touched with Angela and David are going through. You're touched with T is going through and Marilyn, Matthew, all of those, Lord, who are here, all of those who are watching, my Uncle Joe watching, Lord, my Aunt Mary. You know what they're going through for Tony, oh God, for Maria Nader, Lord, for all those watching with us, you know, Lord, may they feel a tangible presence. May they feel uplifted. May something come off, Lord, of them. We shake off those burdens. We shake off the shackles of the enemy. And may you, Lord, put your nail-scarred hand in Satan's face right now in Jesus' name and say, stop. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Jesus, I just want to thank you. Come on, church. Jesus, I just want. Jesus, I just want to thank. Give him some thanks this morning. 
Jesus, I just want to thank you. Thank you for being so good. Thank you for being so good. Hallelujah. Thank you for being so good. Sing it again. Oh, thank you for being so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said he's better to me than I deserve. Hallelujah. He's much better to me than I deserve. Can you say that this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even imagine according to his great power that is, that is at work. Hallelujah. Even when we don't feel that he's working. Hallelujah. Like we sang before. According to his great power that is at work within us. To him be glory throughout all ages, in the church, and in Christ Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Have a blessed day in Jesus.